This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. All the major OEMs have developed or are developing software-defined vehicles or SDVs, which allows practically any component or part to be controlled or manipulated by software. I think most people know that Tesla pioneered the concept, but Ward's put together a fascinating list ranking 22 automakers on their transition to SDVs using five main categories. SDV strategy, connectivity, electrification, portfolio complexity, and financial strength. And the top four leaders, Tesla, Lucid, Rivian, and Neo, which have already delivered software-defined vehicles, are all new EV companies. Other than Tesla, the question for them will be, can they reach scale? We find Ward's description for the contenders very interesting. This is where most of the mainstream brands fall. Quote, OEMs yet to launch their next generation platforms of semi-SDVs or that have set ambitious and potentially unattainable SDV timeline targets. Ooh, that doesn't sound too promising. But what we know of VW software division called Cariad, it's pretty accurate. And also notice how every single one of the brands in the lowest follower section is a Japanese automaker. The recycling of EV batteries is still in its early days, but there's growing global interest because it's already profitable. NMC batteries, or ones with nickel, manganese, and cobalt, contain an average of $10,000 worth of materials for every ton of battery cell weight. LFP batteries, lithium iron phosphate, have about four grand worth of materials, according to a company called Fast Markets that tracks commodity prices. S&P Global Commodity Insights is forecasting that battery recycling will provide 11% of all the lithium, 11% of the nickel, and 44% of the cobalt needed to make new batteries by the end of this decade. Battery recycling companies like Serba and Lifecycle have told Autoline that in a couple of decades, recycling could replace a significant amount of raw material mining. It costs more to repair an EV than it does an ICE vehicle. That's according to a new study from Mitchell International. In the second quarter of the year, EV repair costs were $963 higher on average than ICE vehicles in the U.S. In Canada, EVs are more than $1,300 more expensive to repair. And when you look at just Tesla, the cost jumped to about $1,600 more in both countries. Part of the reason for the difference is that EV repairs require a lot more OEM parts about 90% for EVs, compared to about 66% for ICE vehicles. Everybody knows that regularly fast charging your EV will kill the battery. Or will it? A company called Recurrent Auto compared Tesla Model Ys and 3s that fast charge at least 90% of the time to ones that fast charge less than 10%. While there's clearly battery degradation over time, there's shockingly little difference between fast and slow charging, maybe 1-2%. to 2%. But Teslas also do well because it has very good thermal voltage and battery management systems. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. There's a lot of activity with EV charging to report on today. And first up, Mercedes-Benz announced it will open the first hubs for its global EV charging network starting in October. They'll be located in Atlanta in the U.S., Chengdu in China, and Mannheim, Germany. By the end of next year, Mercedes is aiming to install 2,000 fast charging points. And by the end of the decade, it plans to have 10,000 charging points located at 2,000 charging hubs globally. Depending on the region, the stations will offer a charging rate up to 400 kilowatts, and they'll be open to all brands. 
In the next bit of charging news, Stellantis announced it has partnered with Charge Enterprises to help build an EV charging network at its 2,600 plus dealers in the U.S. and provide them with end-to-end service. Stellantis has partnered with three other companies to provide similar services for its dealers and says these deals will help it reach its goal of hitting 50% BEV sales in the U.S. by the end of the decade. And to round out our EV charging news, an engine and transmission subsidiary of the Hyundai Group is developing EV fast chargers with proprietary technology that can put out up to 350 kilowatts. Hyundai is trying to get them certified by the Korean government so it can deploy them at its charging stations in the country by the end of the year. Many companies are pledging to reach net zero carbon emissions by the middle of this century, including the supplier company Magna. But Magna is laying out its short-term steps to reach its long-term goals. For example, In Europe, it will use 100% renewable electricity by 2025 and globally by 2030. It will cut about 42% of its 1 and 2 emissions and about 25% of its Scope 3 emissions by 2030. Now, Scope 1 emissions are greenhouse gases released directly by a business. Scope 2 emissions are indirect GHGs released from the energy bought by a company, and scope three emissions are indirect GHG emissions that come from a company's value chain, meaning from its suppliers. Magna's Director of Sustainability and Energy, Ahmad Al-Ghanzuri tells Autoline that this year alone, Magna will cut 10% of its energy usage by using waste heat from its manufacturing operations to warm up its plants. It will also use automated building management to cut energy costs. It's great to hear about all these net zero pledges for 2050, but it's more impressive to hear about the steps that are being taken today to get there. Maybe Elon Musk is right that using video cameras is better than using LiDAR. A company called Nodar, which makes stereo vision video cameras, did a comparison test and came up with some interesting data. In one test at an automotive environmental chamber in Germany, it simulated driving on dark roads in heavy rain, violent rainstorms and fog, and the point cloud density from the high resolution 3D cameras was 50 times greater than LiDARs. In night driving tests on roads in the Boston area, LiDAR generated about a million points of data per second, while stereo vision cameras generated 40 million data points. And in tests for obstacle detection on dark roads at a closed airstrip in Maine, cameras detected a child-sized mannequin from about 200 meters away, while the LiDAR only detected it from 100 meters. Now, we would expect a camera company to do tests that would favor its product over LiDAR. But even so, this is pretty interesting data. The all-new Porsche Cayenne debuted earlier this year, and now it's coming out with the Turbo PHEV version, which it says is the most powerful Cayenne ever. Its 4-liter twin-turbo V8 engine is paired with an electric motor that combines for nearly 545 kilowatts, or 730 horsepower, and it will do 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. The battery pack is up from about 18 kilowatt hours to nearly 26 kilowatt hours, which it says is enough to provide up to 82 kilometers or about 50 miles of range in the city. There's a few styling cues that set the turbo plug-in models apart from other Cayennes, and like most Porsches, there's upgrades available for the suspension, brakes, and interior. When it launches later this year, pricing in the U.S. will start around $148,500, while in Germany, it will cost about 176,000 euros. And the coupe version is available for about five grand more. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. 
Intrepid Control Systems. Over-the-air engineering. Boost your game. Scheffler. We pioneer motion. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies. The formula for better mobility. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. At Tejin Automotive Technologies, we combine world-class composite materials expertise with cutting-edge designs. Because frankly, there are better ways to lightweight vehicles. So lighten up with Tejin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility.